treatment. And more breaking news this time out of Syria. Reuters is reporting a team of UN inspectors just left their hotel to begin a third day of investigations. Now they're looking into a possible chemical attack by Syrian government on U uh, uh, civilians. Right now, President Obama says that he has not made a decision on whether to strike. But in the last few minutes, U.S. Senator John Cornyn tweeted the president will meet with Congress on a conference call and it's to decide what to do. Meantime, a close U.S. ally, Great Britain, has backed off on a rush to strike, meaning any U.S. attack in the next few days might have to be done alone. And Josh has been up all night in the newsroom monitoring the very latest. And Josh, all eyes are on Syria. Yeah, Mike, you got that right. I got in around 10 o'clock last night. I've been watching the wires as some members of Congress speak out about the potential that the U.S. will get involved here. I can tell you more than 100 members of Congress right now want to vote on this before anything moves forward. Also overnight, I talked with a local local woman who says she has mixed feelings about military intervention in Syria. I can't anymore watch, watch, the, uh, uh, watch gets killed. Lubna Alaf is from Syria. She lives in Westlake now. She moved to America when she was 24. She remembers her homeland differently than the world sees it today. People live in harmony together. It was extremely safe. It's a beautiful country. Today, Alaf is an activist. As president of the Ohio chapter of the Syrian American Alliance, she's fighting for Syria to be free and the people safe. But she's hoping President Obama will give the Syrian regime time to leave the country to prevent an airstrike and the killing of more innocent people. I really don't want the strike, but if it has to happen to stop the killing, it has to happen. If we're talking about strike or no strike, I can't wait to see that the people in my country are back to normal. People are not scared anymore, especially the kids. There are, there are kids who didn't go to school for over two years. They live in fear. They are hungry. They are scared. Now, Mike Alaf says not a day goes by when she doesn't cry, sometimes for hours, thinking about all the killings in her home country, especially, she says, the young, innocent children here. Very sad what's been going on over there. Thank you, Josh. We're going to be monitoring the crisis in Syria throughout the morning. Starting at 7 o'clock, a closer look at Syria's electronic army, the hackers targeting U.S. websites. And we're going to focus on the major developments of the day later on Live on 5.